Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Perpetual Chess bonus pod. I thought it would be a good time to check in on the Women's World Championship, which is at the halfway point as we record this here on Wednesday, July 12th. And we have a great guest to discuss it. But first, and I'll introduce her momentarily, but first, I just wanted to go through a few basic facts about the match for anyone who needs to be caught up on it. It, of course, fe features the champion, Ju Wen Jun, 32 years of age, rated 2564, playing Lei Ting Jie, 26 years of age, rated 2554. It's been a tightly contested match. Uh, the challenger, Lei Ting Jie, actually has the lead three and a half to two and a half. Again, it's a 12 game match, and this is the halfway point we're recording uh, on Wednesday. And they will resume in a couple of days. They actually switch cities. It's in two different cities in China. They have been in Shanghai and now they will switch to Chongqing, which I'm probably saying wrong. I apologize. But they will be switching venues. And the games have been really interesting. Even the draws have been hard fought in, in my um, somewhat um non-grandmaster opinion, you could say the games have been very well played. Not a lot of um Errors and the game that uh, Lei Ting Jie won in game five, I thought was uh, particularly instructive, as we will discuss with our guest. And our guest is one of the best players in the United States. She is a student at the University of Missouri. Um, she played for the Olympiad team, both for her native Uzbekistan and more recently, she was board one for the United States, which had a, which had a great showing in the most recent Olympiad. Um, I've been a fan of her since I heard her on Cover Stories with Chess Life, the podcast by John Hartman. You can hear lots more about her background in episode 49 of that. But here we're going to discuss the match and then catch up a little bit. And let's welcome Beijing Talk Here Janava uh, to the pod. Welcome, Beijing. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. And I'm sorry, can you, uh, how did I do with your with your name? Oh, you did it great. It's uh, Begim Tokir Janava, so you got it. Great. Okay, Begim, my apologies. So Begim, I know you've been covering this uh, match for Chess Life Online. You've been annotating yeah. the games. Uh, what are your reflections on the games? Has, has anything stood out to you? Yeah, absolutely. I was uh, impressed by Leeting G's opening choices and opening preparation in general. I have a feeling she has been putting pressure since they want to uh, to the uh, world champion. Uh, so Ju Wen Jun was struggling and trying to find, you know, kind of like sidelines during the game. It felt like she know. Of course, she knows a lot. She know. Uh, she knows where uh, she can you know equalize easily or uh, try for advantage but it felt like she was a little bit uh, scared of uh, leading j's openings yeah and leading j both seconds i don't know if they have more than one person working on their team but both have both players have had at least one second reveal uh leading yeah. j is there with timur rajabov a uh, super yeah. grandmaster and uh, Ju Wen Jun is there with Grandmaster Pantala Hari Krishna. Uh, both obviously know their openings inside and out. Um, and I, just as a chess fan, my perspective, Bigham, has been that it's fun openings to follow. I mean, we've had a couple Roy Lopez's. We've had the Italian opening. Yeah. Um, when um, when Leighton J has the white pieces and with black, we're getting a lot of sort of classic Tarash, Queen's Gambit decline, semi, semi Tarash type openings. Um, do you enjoy these sort of classical uh, openings that we're seeing? Uh, absolutely, I enjoy every opening. Actually, I want to like see new things, and I want to see classical like uh, old lines, and because they improve it, especially while you're preparing for the match, you review old things and you add some new lines, some new ideas, even though. You can see like engines always say it's equal. It's just a new idea and it's just hard to play. So it's interesting for me to think for myself and figure out what would I do despite what engine suggests. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, Leiting G has Timur Rajabov, who's known for uh, like, especially with white pieces, but in general, who's known for his great opening preparation. And you can see uh how much strength he brought to opening preparation of Leiting G as well. Yeah, and they both come across as pretty likable in the press conferences. Uh, I think Leiting J might be a little more forthcoming. Um, yeah. She she said, uh, 
and I quote when and they're they're asked about their favorite sport. Ju Wenjun says, "Can I choose chess?" Uh, Lei Ting <laughs> uh said was asked about how she handled the pandemic. She said, as a professional chess player, if you don't have tournaments to play or you want to chase then go some goals, then just stay home and train. There's nothing I'm worried about in my life. So I can just focus on chess totally. And they both sort yeah. of have this sort of easygoing nature. So that that's yeah. another aspect of the match I've enjoyed. Uh, actually, I saw that yesterday and exactly I read the same thing you did and I was like, you're so right. And yeah. For chess, especially, it's very important not to, to have any extra worries that's why uh, lots of chess players and especially strong chess players they already always have some uh, someone who manages everything for them so uh, in general not having any worries makes you enjoy chess more because you you get you love chess as a, a ch chess player, right? Or as a professional chess player. But if you have to worry about something else during the game, it's a totally different thing. And But when you can focus and you love the game, you can work on it. It's like a perfect combination of uh, becoming a strong chess player. And for Lei Tingjie, I, I guess it's perfect time to become a world champion. Yeah, I mean, obviously, at this point, she would be considered the favorite, I think, um, to the extent that there were betting markets available. Shout out to the Chicken Chess Club podcast when I heard them discuss it. The, the one market they found, uh, uh, Ju Wenjun was the favorite, although rating wise, obviously, they're very close. Um, but certainly with uh, Lei Tingjie now having the lead, you, you'd have to think uh, the obviously um, the ball's in her court. And as we think with six games left, we start to wonder about potential opening changes. Of course, um, Ju Wenjun has been playing double king pawn, playing very solid. But at some point, you have to wonder. She's um, she's played a lot of Nidorfs in her career. Do you think that we will see a, a change? And if so, if you were playing, when would you think about going for something more dynamic? Would you do it with three blocks left or wait till two? What do you think? I think I would try to uh, get my point back as soon as possible because <laughs> I won't be able to sleep. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and as a world champion, you just don't want to have that for uh, have that pressure for a long time because uh, you used to put pressure on your opponents, especially if you see the history of Yu Wen Jun. She doesn't really have like these kind of situations for a long time, right? And I think uh, she would like to try with White, but the problem with White is uh, she really doesn't have anything else than this uh, D4, C4, Knight F3, and uh, Knight Knight F3, Knight C3, E3 line she's playing. Uh, she tried D tag C5, but like she's not getting anything. Maybe she needs to switch to E4, which she doesn't play right. to get more. Um, more game or she needs to try with black to win it's just a hard situation and it's hard to say something without knowing what she prepared for the match because it's a different totally preparation situation and i bet they prepared for all of the like outcome possible outcomes in the match they of course consider what happens if they are like a uh, point down and uh, they have like must win situation that's the strategy think of before the match not necessarily during the match so uh it's just hard for me to say anything without knowing yeah it is it's funny in the modern opening era it does feel like more of a tough tough situation than in prior eras just because it seems like it's tough to expect much with white you know it's not like yeah. you can count on getting a big edge with the white pieces and as you say it seems like her venturing e4 at this point would be a surprise but um I, I guess it wouldn't be too surprising if she tried some sort of D4 sideline. That might be, as you say today, uh, she tried taking on D5 right away. Uh, didn't didn't seem to lead to much, um, but maybe we'll see like a London or a Tory or a Trumpovsky. I always are like a ready. I always venture to these sort of um, somewhat less explored, although everything's explored these days, uh, D4 lines with white. And as you say, with black, it's not that easy either, either because you would think if she plays the Sicilian and Lei Tingjie still has the lead, 
Um, personally, I'd be surprised to see an open Sicilian. Do you think we'd see an open Sicilian or like a Moscow variation? I, w- I would I would love to see open Sicilian. <laughs> I would I love to see it, but are we going to? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question we have. Maybe uh, she's gonna she's gonna play that because uh, Jude plays C5 with, uh, with Black and she's a successful chess player in general in every line. So uh, I hope to see more fighting chess, but uh, I have a feeling she wanted to, over, like, uh, she wanted to play with Li Tingji not necessarily in the opening, but like middle game. She was trying to do that, and at some point, with, even with black pieces, she got a very good like position with two bishops and everything. But it wasn't enough. But I have a feeling that she wants, uh, she focused and still wants to focus on middle game more than openings. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, and. I mean, to the extent she does try anything in the opening, they do have an extra rest day now, although there's some travel involved. I actually forgot to check. Do you know, like, is this a big trip uh, going from Shanghai to Chongqing? I don't know the distance, actually. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I know that they're changing. So, But I don't feel like it's that long to make uh, chess players uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, in the modern era, I'm sure they're traveling relatively comfortably and can... Um, yeah pretty much just focus on the chess. So as so again, next up, um, do you know who will be white in game seven? Do they continue yeah. to alternate? It's going to be Lei Ting Ji. Okay. Lei Ting Ji. So yeah, so um, Ju Wen Jun, we'll get some more information then whether we get a Sicilian defense. And uh, Beijing, let me ask you, have you played either of uh, these great players? Yeah, I played both of them. I played uh, I played a match with Ju Wen Jun in 2018, actually. Uh, at that time, it was World Championship, knockout system, World Championship in Huntington Sisk. And she knocked me out <laughs> uh, with... Uh, so it was my fourth match and one of the best tournaments of my life. I made it to top eight uh, in that tournament. And then I lost against Ju Wen Jun there. It was painful. Oh, I'm sorry to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're totally fine. And, and uh, with Li Ting Ji, when I was playing in, uh, in Uzbekistan, for Uzbekistan, I played a couple of games, I believe, against her, but I do remember I played one game. Maybe it was Blitz or Rapid in Asian Teams Championship or something like, but, uh, something like that, but I played with both of them for sure. Okay. And did you get a chance to go over the games with them at all? It sounds like the, the uh, Ju Wen Jun game was pretty high stakes. It probably wasn't the best uh, the best uh, time. Yeah, to... I didn't talk to her, <laughs> but I know her. Uh, okay. I know her and uh, Li Ting Ji, we didn't talk about chess, but in general, I had a couple of interactions while we were t- traveling to tournaments. So she's a very positive person and I like her a lot. Yeah, that that definitely comes across um, in the media. It seems like either would be a a great world champion. Absolutely. Um, Ju Win Jun is a great person for sure as well. Yeah. So should be interesting to see the second half here on Perpetual Chess. We will be covering it when the match uh, does come to a conclusion. Now, uh, let me ask you, Big Game, do you have any other sort of big picture things you're looking for? Obviously, all we can do as sort of observers is kind of think about the openings. There's not much else we can yeah. sort of uh, plan, but, but anything else, like, do you think that we'll necessarily see like more risk taking throughout the game? Yeah, I really want to see, but I'm not sure if we are going to see because so far they were uh, trying to play more positional chess and not to go to complicated positions where they're risking to open their like King, uh king side or like whenever they could play g5 a couple of times with black even letting g she didn't play she uh tried to equalize or exchange the pieces they are trying to get clarity of the position like as fa- as soon as possible you know and then this is kind of a little bit upsetting to see, but I do totally understand the situation. For example, for us, it's great that they are risking, but for them, it's not great because they are risking their maybe biggest tournament of their career. So, yeah. so it's totally understandable. They are 
trying to control the position as much as possible. I would like to see them risking, and now Jew most probably is the one who's going to try to risk as much as possible, but I cannot predict how much it's going to be. Yeah. And of course, if they do, if Ju Wenjun does manage to even the score and the game were to go to a tie break, um, do you have a sense, uh, which at this point would be a good outcome uh, for Ju Wenjun, do you have a sense who would be favored as it moved to faster time controls? I think uh, Ju actually is a great, uh, like, rapid player as well. And Li Ting Ji, with her opening preparation, it's going to be equal, I would say, because okay. uh, now uh, Li Ting Ji is in a totally different uh, mindset, especially if you win, a, after you win a game of championship match, you're so confident, even if she is, she's going to go to the um this rapid i think she will be way more confident than ju wen jun that's that that changed a lot in my opinion yeah okay well we'll see i mean it's going to be tough like as we've it said late late <laughs> jay's going to be she's going to be hard to beat with only uh you know only a handful six games of of chess remaining um yeah, so we will we will keep our eye on that but big M, if you don't mind i'd like to catch up a bit on your career now that I, i'm a fan since having heard your previous interview thank you so much sure so um first of all listeners should definitely check out your interview with john hartman if you have not already to hear big M's whole story uh coming from uzbekistan and now uh studying at the university of missouri of course uh christian Karilla. shout out to christian is is the coach there in and in that interview, you mentioned that you were focusing more on your academics than your chess, but you were looking forward to a period where you could get back to sort of a professional level focus on chess. So dare I ask, Bigim, as, as it's the summer right now, uh, where are you in that sort of uh, balancing act? Well, I'm happy to say that I'm coming back a little bit because I I went to Europe for one and a half month. I played three tournaments there. Uh, two of them were big ones. I traveled a little bit, of course, with my college friends. Uh, but these uh, Norway chess and Dortmund, they were great open tournaments. And slowly I'm trying to find my uh, chess, you know, chess strengths, chess weaknesses over again. I want to have fresh look to my games and understand what I should do, what should I work on, because I haven't been playing many tournaments for a long while because of the pandemic and because of my school. I have one more semester left, but slowly I am playing more tournaments and I'm trying to focus a little bit more on chess. So it's going well so far. Okay, so it sounds like you have some preliminary thoughts in mind, but you haven't like really reviewed your games to know exactly what to take away from them. I have some takeaways, but uh, they are my weaknesses. I don't want to share. Them. Ah, okay. <laughs> and and what about your upcoming schedule? So you will be going back to school, as you said, you have one more semester. Um, but do you have yeah. any other tournaments on the horizon first? Yeah, I'm hoping to play War Teams Championship. Uh, we haven't received the lineup yet, but I'm hoping to be in. Mm, no. So I might go to Poland to play War Teams uh, Rapid Championship. Then I want to play US Champs. And after that, uh, in December, I want to play War Blitz and Rapid. So far, I have only three tournaments because I have to still graduate. Right. Well, in the meantime, while you're back, you've got fresh games to look at. Um, I know you're living in you're you're spending the summer in St. Louis, so tons of strong chess players around. Um, what is are you able to put in much study on your own uh, during this sort of interlude? Uh, yes and no, because I still uh, I work for St. Louis Chess Club, so my work takes some time. And but I know my weaknesses so i am trying to improve on them but it takes time i'm just trying to play online some online games and just you know in general have fun with chess study it and then just get new knowledge okay and for the online games do you have like a secret account or is it uh is it public <laughs> it is public and in my public account i just don't play that much but uh, try to play titles tuesday ones but like 
I don't hide uh, anything like secret account and anything like that. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't say that. Is that like, <laughs> obviously you must talk about it with your, your St. Louis contemporaries. I know uh, Tatyev's living there now, Kostya Kovutsky, Eric Rosen. Yeah. I mean, you've got, uh, and not to mention all of your, your, your contemporaries at uh, University of Missouri. So I'm sure you've got quite a, a chess network. Like, What's the, what's, oh, yeah. the, what's the general advice? Like, are there are a lot of your friends are keeping uh, private accounts or are mostly people playing publicly? Oh, definitely. Everyone uh, has uh, private accounts. Even I do. But like, it's not like I'm hiding away or something like that. I just meant that. Uh, for professional chess players in general, uh, they want to test their openings, but they don't want other people to see it. Right. So new ideas, new openings. And sometimes if you don't have a training partner, you go and play it online. That's why having a private account helps uh, in such cases. That makes sense. And so you said you've identified some things. You don't necessarily want to reveal them, which totally makes sense. But in terms of your daily work, is there anything you can reveal? Like, is it more opening based or is it more like sort of calculations, problem solving based? Yeah, and nowadays I'm reading mm, books, actually. <laughs> like how you books. read a strange look, <laughs> books? Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not big on chess books, but I figured that I have to uh, read more than I do. In general, I read a lot of like business books and uh, I love reading, but not necessarily chess books. I love like I'm obsessed playing um, chess, p- solving puzzles and especially Playing tournaments are my favorite, but you got to put some work. Yeah. Like, so uh, I would say I'm just reading um, reading books. These now, days. Can, can any of these books be revealed or are those secret too? Uh, no, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, one book I'm reading is for, for your strengths. For example, it's not for professional chess players or something, I guess, but it's very helpful for uh, for professions maybe in some cases it's just basic uh positional understanding which is reassess your chess mm-hmm. so i uh, one of my friends recommended to check it and it's a huge book apparently i oh, yeah, yeah. i got it two days ago so i i started reviewing it and the material is uh, quite easy but uh also it gives um, in general, positional understanding of chess. And sometimes it's good to review and good to like get back to basics of position. And it has great imbalances, positional imbalances too. So mm-hmm. I have been enjoying this book. Nice. Yeah. Jeremy Someone's a good writer. So if nothing else, yes. you shouldn't be bored while reading it, which is my... No, it's a great book. I would recommend to everyone. Excellent. Well, so we've got some tournaments on the docket. It sounds like some secret training going going on. No, no secret training. It's not going that much. I'm just reading books. Okay, just just reading, reassess your chest. <laughs> One more semester of school, and then uh, begin. You still believe that when school is done, that's when when you, you had mentioned with John that that you're planning on getting back to professional chess at that point. Yeah, yeah. I at least I'm hoping so because if I I feel like I lost a couple of years um, doing school, but it was very important for me because as a person, I always wanted to ha- have uh, like more than chess in my life. And I'm grateful for that, but I think it's time to get back. Yeah, I mean, you're obviously, you don't need me to tell you this, but obviously you're you're super strong. I mean, I'm looking at your peak rating. You're only 100 points lower then these only, two women... not only it's like 100 <laughs> points i was there and then i started my school and i dropped it all i'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> well as they say class is permanent so <laughs> once you get I back to so. work yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully after the semester i will start uh, working on chess like uh you know in daily b- basis uh and more seriously than i'm doing now Excellent. And I believe this is my last question, but is is you mentioned you're helping the St. Louis Chess Club with their social media. Is that yeah. something that will continue even when you go back to school or is this more like a sort of summer uh, employment opportunity? No, uh, it will continue when I go to school as well. To be honest, I like social media. It's part of 
my degree. So uh, I'm glad that I'm using actually my degree and things I learned in class. So it's something I'm enjoying. Actually. So like, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so when someone shares a picture, like on the St. Louis Chess Club Instagram page, that's you doing it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> most probably, yeah. <laughs> okay. So so everyone be kind and uh, and root, root yes, the game on. Yes, <laughs> yes I, please. As I will be doing. Well, Thank you very much for sharing your perspective on the match. Really, everyone check out Chess Life online to see Begum's continued annotations. And yeah, we'll definitely be rooting for you in your upcoming uh, tournaments. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you for having me. Okay, have a, uh, enjoy the match and thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.